as we end today's broadcast, um, going back to, well, 16 years ago, when then-President Bill Clinton called into radio stations in New York to get out to vote for Hillary for Senate in New York and Al Gore for president. Among the stations he called was WBAI in New York. Uh, he intended to spend two minutes, but WBAI host Gonzalo Alberto and I kept him on the phone for about half an hour. This is an excerpt of our conversation. Mr. President, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. You're calling radio stations to tell people to get out and vote. What do you say to people who feel that the two parties are bought by corporations and that they are, at this point, feel that uh, their vote doesn't make a difference? There, there's not a shred of evidence to support that. That's what I would say. It's true that both parties have wealthy supporters. But let me offer you, let me just give you the differences. Let's look at economic policy. First of all, if you look at the last eight years, look where America was eight years ago and look where it is today. We have the strongest economy in history, and for the first time in 30 years, the incomes of average people and lower income working people have gone up 15% after inflation. The lowest minority unemployment ever recorded, the highest minority home ownership, the highest minority business ownership in history. So that's our record. President Clinton, uh, U.N. figures show that up to 5,000 children a month die in Iraq because of the uh, uh, sanctions against That's not Iraq. true. That's not true. And that's not what they show. Let me just tell you something. Before the sanctions, the year before the Gulf War, you said this. How much money did Iraq earn from oil? Answer, $16 billion. How much money did Iraq earn last year from oil? How much money did they get? Cash on the barrel held to Saddam Hussein. Answer, $19 billion that he can use exclusively for food, for medicine, to develop his country. He's got more money now, $3 billion a year, more than he had nine years ago. If any child is without food or medicine or a roof over his or her head in Iraq, it's because he is claiming the sanctions are doing it and sticking it to his own children. The past two uh, U.N. heads of the program in Iraq have quit calling the U.S. Uh, policy, U.S. U.N. policy, genocidal. What is your response to that? They're wrong. They think that we should reward hunters. Saddam Hussein says, I'm going to starve my kids unless you let me buy nuclear weapons, chemical weapons, and biological weapons. If you let me do everything I want to do so I can get in a position to kill and intimidate people again, then I'll stop starving my kids. And so we're supposed to assume responsibility for his misconduct. That's just not right. Many people say that Ralph Nader is at the high percentage point he is in the polls because you've been responsible for taking the Democratic Party to the right. Uh, what do you say uh, to listeners who are listening around the area right now? Uh, well, I'm glad you asked that. Concerns? I'm glad you asked that. This is the last question I've got time for. I'll be happy to ask for it. Answer that. What is the measure of taking the Democratic Party to the right? That we cut the welfare rolls in half? That poverty is at a 20-year low? That child poverty has been cut by a third in our administration? that the incomes of average Americans have gone up 15% after inflation, that poverty among seniors has gone below 10% for the first time in American history, that we have the lowest African-American, the lowest Latino unemployment rate in the history of the country, that we have a 500% increase in the number of minority kids taking advanced placement tests, that the schools in this country, that the test scores among, since we've required all the schools to have basic standards, test scores among African Americans and other minorities have gone up steadily. Can I say what now, some well, people... Let me, let me just finish. Let me just let, say... Let me, now, wait a minute. You started this, and every question you've asked has been hostile and combative. So you listen to my answer. Will you do that? They've been critical. Now, now you just listen to me. You ask the questions, and I'm going to answer. You have asked questions in a hostile, combative, and even disrespectful tone, but I, and you have never been able to combat the facts I have given you. Now, you listen to this. That was Bill Clinton on Election Day in 2000, calling into our radio station WBAI in New York um, to hear the whole interview. It went on for over a half an hour. You can go to democracynow.org. That was 16 years ago, on Election Day 2000. Tune in tonight on your local station or right here at democracynow.org. We're bringing you a five-hour election night special from 7 p.m. Eastern time to midnight at least. And a very happy birthday to Kieran Crow.
Greg Meadows. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Berkner, Mitch Carla Wills, Laura Gottesdiener, Dina Gester, Sam Alcoff, Robbie Karen, Honey Masood, Trina Nadura, Andre Lewis, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Naguera, and Paul Huckabee, our engineer. Special thanks to Becca Staley, Julie Crosby, Miriam Barnard, Aaron Dooley, Hugh Grant. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.